Miss Aurora is back. It's about a quarter after three now, okay? <laughs> and I told you, secured entrepreneurs, that Miss Aurora was gonna come back and talk about these money blocks. Now, we just got finished talking about the spirit of delay. There are 33 energy blocks. And the book that I want to read some of this from is a book by Simon Bedros. And I could be pronouncing that incorrectly, B-E-D-R-O-S. You can also get this book from Amazon. Now, Simon writes a very nice book. It's like a new age book. Uh, he really is not getting into the spiritual aspect. He doesn't discuss the spirits that are behind the energy blocks, okay? That's what Miss Aurora is going to get into in this video, okay? I'm not gonna do all 33 in this video, but um, all the secured entrepreneurs know that Miss Aurora can go in, okay? But we're not gonna do that, okay? Um, however, I will do a complete, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a complete thing uh, at the next uh, Wealth in Action, okay? It's gonna be really, really, I've had requests, <laughs> okay? So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day. Yes, this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement, but right now we're getting into 3 a.m. shenanigans. Okay, so please allow Miss Aurora to give this disclaimer for the entrepreneurs who are stopping by to visit us for the first time. Hello. <laughs> okay. We respect everyone's spiritual and religious beliefs here. All of the secured entrepreneurs know that Miss Aurora is international. We work with many entrepreneurs. Okay. And uh, Miss Aurora has studied many spiritual and religious beliefs. All right. I have prayed with people of many religious and spiritual backgrounds, okay? We don't discriminate over here. Whatever you believe, we're open to hearing what you believe and all of that, okay? So please do not be offended by anything that you hear in this video. As a matter of fact, please comment below, all right? And again, please, I, I thank all of the entrepreneurs who email after they see these videos. Uh, some of you don't really like to comment on YouTube, you like to email Miss Aurora, and I appreciate that. Please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com. Now, the energy block that I want to get into in this video, and this is going to be the first, I'm going to, I'm going to go over a few, okay? But in this video, I want to address fear and scarcity, okay? Fear and scarcity. Now, let's, let's get into what the author is saying about this in his book. Now, this is chapter three in this book, Clearing Energy Blocks Related to Money Mindset. When it comes to manifesting wealth, our mindset plays a crucial role. Our beliefs, fears, and resistance can all create energy blocks that hinder our ability to attract abundance. In this chapter, we will explore the most common energy blocks related to our money mindset and learn how to clear them. Fear of scarcity and lack. One of the most significant energy blocks related to wealth manifestation is the fear of scarcity and lack. For example, if you constantly worry about not having enough money, you may hesitate to invest in opportunities that could potentially lead to wealth, or you may avoid spending money altogether, leading to a scarcity mindset that attracts more scarcity into your life. To clear this energy block, you need to shift your focus from scarcity to abundance. One way to do this is by practicing gratitude for what you already have. Even if it seems small, you can also acknowledge the abundance around you, such as the air you breathe, the people you love, and the opportunities available to you. 
It's also essential to identify and challenge limiting beliefs that fuel your fear of scarcity, such as money is evil, and replace them with positive affirmations that align with your desire for abundance, such as I am worthy of abundance and prosperity. Then he goes on to, to talk about negative beliefs about money. Negative beliefs about money are another significant energy block that can sabotage your wealth manifestation. For example, if you believe that wealthy people are greedy or that money is the root of all evil, you may subconsciously resist opportunities to make money or feel guilty when you do have money. To clear this energy block, you need to reframe your beliefs about money and wealth. You can start by examining the source of your negative beliefs and questioning their validity. For example, if you believe that wealthy people are greedy, you can seek out positive examples of wealthy and successful individuals who have made a positive impact on the world, such as Oprah Winfrey or Bill Gates. You can also practice affirmations that align with your desire for abundance, such as I am worthy of wealth and prosperity and visualize yourself living a life of abundance. And then he goes on into resistance to wealth. Lastly, resistance to wealth is another energy block that can hinder your ability to manifest abundance. For example, if you avoid opportunities that require financial investments or procrastinate when it comes to taking action towards your goals, you may be subconsciously resisting wealth. This resistance is often rooted in subconscious beliefs and fears, such as fear of success, fear of failure, or fear of change. To clear this energy block, you need to identify and confront the underlying fears and beliefs that fuel your resistance to wealth. For example, if you have a fear of success, you can explore where that fear comes from and challenge its validity. You can also take inspired action towards your goals, even if it feels scary or uncomfortable, and trust that abundance is available to you. Practices such as meditation, visualization, and self-reflection can also help you realize resistance and align with your desire for abundance. Now, secured entrepreneurs, all of those things sound very nice and very lovely. Okay. And I don't disagree with anything that Simon Bedros is saying in his book. He is addressing the things that are actually blocking people. But now Miss Aurora is going to tell you what's actually happening. If in fact you are suffering from the fear of scarcity and lack as an entrepreneur. Now, whoever is coming by to visit with us and you're not an entrepreneur, this will apply to you as well. Fear. The spirit of fear loves jacking people. And the spirit of fear knows that it will not have any opposition. The reason why it does not have any opposition is because the number one thing that an individual is going to fear is death. Now, if you fear death, that's the start of you fearing every other thing in your life. You're not going to do certain things because you may die. Now it's very, very interesting. It's very strange how that happens because we see that there are a lot of people who actually kill themselves over time, right? So you would, it, it would be hard to believe that these people actually fear death. What are they doing? Smoking, uh, uh, they're on particular types of drugs. 
they're smoking cigarettes, they're drinking alcohol excessively, okay? Uh, they're addicted to things that actually harm uh, their physical bodies. They're addicted to things that actually harm them spiritually, right? So you, you wouldn't really believe that they had an actual fear of death, but that's actually not true. Because what's, what's happening is that the trick, the trick, they're being tricked. All of these things numb people. It's, it's putting people in the fantasy. Anytime you're addicted to things like that, it's because you don't want to think about your life. Anytime you can get caught up in, you know, shows and you know all the characters, you're in, you're involved in all these people's lives. That's why reality TV is so popular because, and, and, and oh gosh, uh, Maury Povich and all, and all these shows that people were watching, you're just all hooked up on these things because, you know, you, you, you want to be involved in other people's lives. You're not happy about your own life, right? You're numbing yourself. So it all goes back to the fear of death. So because you fear dying now, how did you get hooked on the fear of death? Well, for most people, it started with religion. Hmm. You, you were told that there's such a thing as hell. Now, this is no, once again, this is no disrespect for anybody who believes in hell. And I totally understand that people need hell. They need hell. They need hell. They need the fire pit because if it, they have to, they feel good about telling somebody they're going to go to hell. They feel they have to do this. <laughs> I don't know. You know, people, you might be a person yourself that you, you just want to say that person's going to hell or you tell somebody you going to hell. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you need hell in your life, right? That is a very true fear for people, which is why they fear death. The other reason why people fear death is because they really don't know what happens when you die, right? So if you don't have any type of spiritual connection and you don't have any type of true belief system. Now this is, this is very funny because you know, Miss Aurora talks to a lot of people. I've studied a lot of religions and things like that. And, and, and what I have found is that, and I'm just going to say Christian people, because these, these are people that I most find this with. Most of them don't read the Bible. They don't read, they don't read the Bible. They really just, they go to church and, 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 and they're listening to somebody tell them something, but they don't really read for themselves. They don't really have a true relationship and all that stuff. So they're the, they're the most afraid because they don't, they don't really have true connections. They don't really have a true spiritual connection. Right? So I've, I've had many of them tell me that they really, they really want to live a very long time. I've had many of them say they want to live till they want to get their 120. They like to quote the scripture. And I have said this many times as well, that man, if the most high promised man 120, or well, the actual scripture was that the, the man was living for, you know, the man was living a long time, but the God in the old Testament in, uh, in the Talmud was like, listen, I can't be hanging out with, this is a paraphrase. I can't be hanging out with man like that. You know, he, he kind of on my nerves. So I'm going to cut his life down to 120 years. Okay. <laughs> right. That's basically what happened. Okay. So it became, wow. Okay. I would like to get my 120. If that's all I'm going to get, I would like to get my 120. Okay. So I, I have a lot of people who, who say that to me, like, oh, uh -uh, I want to get my 120 because we all say no one has come back to tell us what happens when we die. So there, there's like this innate fear. So now I have this, this fear of death. Doesn't mean I'm not going to take certain risks. It's, it's in the back of my mind somewhere. It's in the back of my mind. It's, it's playing in the background. It's a program that's playing in the background and it will pop out every now and again. It may not show its face every day or every time I go to do something 
but it's playing back there and it will show up when I really need it. Okay? So, because that fear is there, I can easily add on the fear of scarcity. All right, so I have had people tell me that they're not going to do certain things because they don't know when they're going to die. I had a person say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that because I could die tonight. Then what? I had somebody else say, I'll probably be dead tomorrow. So why would I do that? Okay. That, that, that was the spirit of scarcity hanging out with lack. The spirit of lack will consistently tell someone not to do things that are beneficial to them. Also, the spirit of lack loves to convince people that, um, you know, everything is a scam. You know, <laughs> some things are scams. Now, let, let's just, let me clear that up. There, there's a whole lot of drifters out here, and we do know this. There's a whole lot of drifting going on out here, and we do have to be very aware. But you will find that there's a lot of people who are totally possessed by the spirit of lack that they think everything is a scam. Like, I'm like, you can, you can show them the, 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 the proof. I mean, evidence. Okay. And they'll be like, Hmm, that's a scam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Also, I have found that the spirit of scarcity, the spirit of lack will prevent people from doing things that is right for them to, I mean, they need these things, these things, you cannot live your life without certain things and they will not do it. Right? So the things that Mr. Bedros is saying in the book, you can't even get to until you address the spirit of fear on its face the spirit of fear, then you can address the spirit of scarcity and the, and then the spirit of lack. So let me just, let me just talk about the fear around the money, because if you don't address the actual spirit of fear relating to your money, you can't really get on to the spirit of scarcity and the spirit of lack because that spirit of fear we already know that's, that's a generational situation. Okay. That, that spirit has kept your generations stark raving poor. I mean, that spirit of fear just loves to hang out with poverty. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now for a lot of the Christian entrepreneurs, you already know that in the book of, they call it job or job. Okay. Um, what does he say? The thing that he feared the most has come upon him. Okay. Your brother, Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I affectionately call sweet Afro Jesus. Okay. Repeatedly told people not to fear, not to possess the spirit of fear, not to inhabit the spirit of fear, not to even entertain the spirit of fear. Okay. Now the moment that you know, you need to invest in yourself, your business. Okay. And maybe, you know, you only have a few dollars. That's when now you got to start opening up your mouth because you know that the spirit of fear around that is creeping in. The spirit of fear around that is creeping in. Now, Miss Aurora just told you in the video, destroying the spirit of delay. You better start, you better get to opening up your mouth, call in, call in your team, 
Holy angels from the north, the east, the south, and the west around me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whoever it is, whoever it is, because we're not offending anybody, right? Okay. You better start casting out that spirit of fear around this situation and call in the spirits that you know you need to assist you, to release you. And you got to command, okay? You got to command to be released of that spirit surrounding that situation because you already know, consciously, you already know you got to make this move. Why? Because it's time for you to do, do the things that you need to do to uh, see uh, progress in your life. Now, you're not going to see progress in your life if you're allowing fear to paralyze you in the area of your money. Okay. Now, once you have actually been uh, dealing with your with with fear, casting out the spirit of fear as it relates to money, now you can begin to address the spirit of scarcity because you already know it's hanging out with you. So. The first thing that Miss Aurora is going to tell you is that you've got to now begin to assess the people who are around you, who are also hanging out with fear around money and the spirit of scarcity around money, the spirit of lack around money. Because how many of the secured entrepreneurs know that when you welcome in people into your surroundings, your environment, your life. You're welcoming all the spirits that they come with. <laughs> okay. Have you ever wondered, Hey, my life was going great until you got here. Things were, things were running smooth until you got here. I had this thing in the bag, then you showed up and I lost this deal. Have you ever had that happen to you? I've met many a women. Oh, my business was going so well. Then I got involved with this man. Lost everything. Okay. It is very real. You have got to be so mindful. Comment below. Comment below. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Comment below. All right. This is serious. Okay. You have got to now identify the spirit of scarcity in every area of your life. Because if you're allowing scarcity to hang, and let me give you some examples. Now you go to the supermarket, something that you need is on sale. Now, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's you, your children, a couple of people in the house, you know, you need to buy all the things because they're on sale, but I'm only going to get two of them because the sale is buy two, you know, buy one, get one free. I'll just get the one, buy one, get one free. When you know good and well that it makes sense to get maybe four of them so that you ain't got to come back up in here for this stuff. And it's already on sale, but, but. You, you got the, you got the spirit of lack and scarcity hanging out with you and the fear is their boss. And your first thought is, I don't really want to spend this money right now because the light bill got to be paid. I got, you know, I got, I got to put gas in the car. Like oh, uh, all of that begins to happen. Those are the spirits. So what Mr. Bedros is saying in the book is all fine and good. But those are the things that you begin to do after you have dealt with those spirits. Again, if you do not win the battle spiritually, you will not win the battle physically. You can do all the meditation that you want. You can do all the visualization that you want. You can do all the affirmations that you want. If you have not dealt with the underlying root spirit that is harassing and jacking you up, pumping you up the butt, okay? If you have not dealt with that, none of those things are going to work. And I want all of the secured entrepreneurs to comment below. If you have experienced this already, doing all of these things. Okay. 
and you're still not getting anywhere, comment below. Because, because the reality is you have got to have the ability to identify what spirit is plaguing your life, mainly your finances, because that's what we're talking about. I'm talking about the energies that are blocking your finances. Okay. That's what the book is. It's 33 energy blocks, right? So the three, the three energy blocks around your money. And I'm telling you, they're the three spirits fear, which is the boss of scarcity and lack the spirit of fear, the spirit of scarcity, the spirit of lack. You've got to begin to cast out the spirit of fear first coming to terms with the fact that yes, you're going to transition from this life. And if you have problems with that, begin to make plans for the things that you need to, uh, uh, do for yourself. Do you need life insurance? What, what do you need? What do you need so that everybody's all right when you leave? Okay. Now spiritually, you already know that all is well. Spiritually, you know that subconsciously, you know that physically, maybe you don't know that. So if that's part of how, how the spirit is constantly trapping you deal with that. Okay. Whatever it is that, that, you know, is physically, you know, in your natural mind, keeping you stuck there, deal with that. Okay. Uh, work, work on, you know, consistently, uh, uh, being able to identify when you're, you're being uh, you know, attacked in, in that way. Okay. And then, uh, when you start to feel the spirit of scarcity coming on you, start casting it out. When you start to feel the spirit of lack begin to attack you, start casting it out. Okay. And begin to call in the spirits of, uh, wealth, prosperity. Okay. Abundance of, you know, all the things that you desire as it relates to your money. Okay. And once you have begun to clear those things and you know that you are no longer really being hindered by these things, then yes, the instructions that Mr. Bedros is giving in this wonderful book. Okay. You can begin to now put into practice and yes, I do believe that you will see results, but as Miss Aurora is sharing with all of the secured entrepreneurs, you must begin to deal with the spirits that are actually the true blocks. Okay. So that's what Miss Aurora wants to share with you in this video. I will be coming back later on today to talk about, we're going to have a trust talk because you all have been in the emails about this whole faith paying Stevie J this $1 million and y'all asking me about marital trusts and prenups and all of this, you know, and the trust clinic is coming up. So we're going to really be getting into that. So yes, I will, uh, upload all of these videos today. All right. So you all know that you can find me, Miss Aurora day at aurora day and until next time, ta -ta.